Next question is from Ali Greenway. Is counting your weekly calories just as effective as tracking your daily caloric intake? Yeah, to an extent, right? If it's extreme, like let's say your <laughs> let's say your total weekly calories is fourteen thousand calories, you eat them all in one day, and the rest of the days you don't eat anything, <laughs> then probably not. Yeah. But here's why I like weekly calories over daily calories. It mimics real life more. So what I mean by that is. Real life, you don't eat the same exact macros and calories every single day. That's how bodybuilders right. and competitors eat, and it's very monotonous. It's not a great it's relationship. It's way more neurotic that way too. Totally, if you're going to keep tracking every single day, and and you know, yeah, yeah, this does allow for a little bit of spillover, and and you know, you to have a little bit more of a high day, a little bit more of a low day, but I mean, you got to be definitely paying attention. Still, it's going to add up. At the end yeah, of the day. I like it better. I like it better. I like having high days and low days. Again, it mimics real life. I can listen to my. Hunger cues, my energy. I can read my body. Flexibility. Yeah, someday. Oh, I'm gonna go. Oh, Saturdays, I like to go out to dinner with my wife. So that's a higher calorie day and whatever. If you do it like that, I think it's better both uh, behaviorally. I also think it's better metabolically. In my experience, I get better results when it's not the same every single day. Well, our our bodies and our metabolism existed before time and days and <laughs> weeks. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? True. So yeah. I mean, I, it's that's one of the things I always try and get my clients out of like. It, we have we've we've structured our whole lives around these schedules of Monday through Friday, and that these d hours in a day, and like none of that stuff is. It's we made it up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before that, we had a metabolism, and we had things, and you still burn calories, right? It didn't, it doesn't know by a clock what, how you are going to burn or not burn. So I do like the idea of paying attention over over a week versus you know being hung up on every single day, every single meal. It's just honestly though, the the, the best answer to this is it's whatever works best for you, whatever one that you will do the most consistently, right? So if you're somebody who will be more consistent with paying attention to these things and actually watching it, tracking it, and you do better by just adding it up at the end of the week and then evaluating how much exercise you did and saying, oh, I'm in a surplus or I'm in a deficit, then by all means do that. If you're somebody who needs to hold yourself accountable on more of a daily basis, then I understand that also. So yeah. you could you could technically stretch this out for a month. You can go months yeah. at a time. You know, it's funny though. That physiologically speaking, they've done studies on bodybuilders have done this forever, but they've done now they have studies to support why bodybuilders have had this kind of experience where they compared people dieting, and one group did the same you know calorie deficit consistently, and the other group had a deficit and then would have like a week or a few days where they'd eat more and then they go back to a deficit type of deal. Uh, kind of like bodybuilders refeed days or whatever. And they found that the people that that increased the calories every so often actually did better. They kept more muscle and burned more body fat. So physiologically speaking, there may be something there. I speak more of the behavioral aspect. I think it's superior for most people behaviorally and I think that's the most important thing to focus on anyway. Mm-hmm.